Hello! Step 1. In this tutorial, we are going to create a different prefab to be used for every single tile and tile variant that we have here. And that might sound crazy if you have a lot of tiles like I do. Uh, there are 1080 here, in fact. But we have tools for this, so it won't be hard. We just have to set things up properly. So before we begin, we want to try to make sure that these locations for these tiles on the texture are what we want. Basically, we don't want to be shifting or moving around the tiles on the sheet after this step, because if we do that, we'll have to come back to step one again. Also, adding tiles later is work, since these tools require us to break this prefab, see the source file with the original tiles that has all the models in it. You see it's a single prefab that has all the tiles in it. This prefab will be gone. Every tile has to become its own prefab instead. So if we want to add more later, those have to be added from step one on their own, instead of doing them in one shot like we're going to do now with this group. I mean, it's not a big deal, but we want to avoid doing more work or repeating work if possible. Another step you can do that will help avoid repeating work is open up the rotated variance tools in Tiled to Unity and take a look at those patterns here. You want to be sure that all your rotated tiles are arranged in patterns that match one of these. If your rotated tiles don't match these patterns, you can either add more patterns yourself that match the way you laid out your tiles, which isn't hard, I tried to make the code straightforward, or just move your tiles around on the texture and then move your models to match these patterns before we move forward. And you can take a look at the setting up rotated variants tutorial to see why you'll ultimately want to organize your rotated tile variants in those patterns. So in this case, we're all set up so we can keep going. So number one, we have to orient our tiles so that the origin is in the upper left, like it is in tiled. So we want to make sure that our tiles are lined up with a world like this. Our tiles are placed out from X positive and Z positive, the origin in the corner. See the grid? If you missed the setup tutorials, variants are organized along the Y axis like so. See, these are all variants for the same tile. They should be placed at intervals of the tile size along Y. You might notice I have a bunch of random stuff out here that aren't tiles. I can leave them or delete them. The tools will ignore them since they're outside of X positive, Z positive. I'm going to delete them for cleanliness though. One advantage of using the Maya naming tool I give you is that you can easily identify what's a tile and what isn't here in the hierarchy. Okay, they're gone. Next we want to take all our tiles and variants and parent them to the world. They have to be parented to the world for our tool to recognize them as tiles. So game object, clear parent. Now let's open our tool. Step one, create tile prefabs. So this tool is going to go through our scene and try to identify what's a tile and what isn't. So when it finds a tile, it'll make a prefab of it in our specified project folder. So in my case, I'll make a folder for them in Assets, Tiled, Tiles. And I type in Assets, Tiled, Tiles. Now depending on how many tiles you have, it could take a few minutes to create all these prefabs. So a good idea is to run a test run first. That way you can see what the tool will do first without making any changes to your scene or project. So let's do a test run. OK, if you can read this, it's ignoring a bunch of our tiles because they aren't exactly in position. That's because in getting translated from Maya to FBX to Unity, there have been some minuscule rounding errors. And you'll remember from the last tutorial that objects have to be placed at exactly the tile interval for them to be recognized as tiles. So down here, you'll see a tool called Force Exact Positioning. So I'm going to press that to nudge all our errant tile positions into line so the tools will recognize them as tiles. This will affect all objects that are in the X positive Z positive quadrant 
that are parented to the world. And you can see here, it fixed a bunch of them. So let's do another test run. And it found 1,080 tiles. Let's check in Maya. We have 1,080 tiles. Perfect. It found them all. Now let's run it for real now. So as you can see, it's taking a little while. It's adding 1,080 prefabs to the project. So this is going to take my computer probably like three to four minutes. So just so you know what to expect, it's not crashing. We could also use this version of the tool here that only does it for selected objects. That's for a special case though, like maybe you're replacing something or adding new tiles or who knows. Okay, so about three minutes have passed and we now have all our tile prefabs ready to use. And you can see here that it's been set up to use the variant tiles too. So the appropriate tiles have been given a tile variant component that holds all the variants and the prefabs of their variants have been hooked in. So finally, if you're ever trying to create a tile prefab of some asset and it doesn't work, run it in test mode and it should tell you why. So now we're ready for step two.